Hello guys, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Today we will keep working on our towers range and also we will start adding our projectiles into the game. So stick around to see how we do it. And as always, if you like this type of content, please hit that like button and also subscribe so you don't miss out on any other episodes. But now let's get into the episode. We're gonna start out with checking whether or not our enemies are close enough for our towers to shoot. And to do this check, we're going to need to use some math. We're going to use something called Pythagoras Theorem. Pythagoras Theorem. Wait, give me a sec. Pythagoras Theorem. Pythagoras Theorem. I was close enough. And you probably heard about it in your math classes, where A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And we're going to use this to get the actual real distance between the two towers by subtracting the positions with each other to get the hypotenuse. And it's easier to show on a image like this. So we have two objects. We have a enemy and also a tower. And we want to see if the distance between those two are less than the actual range of the tower. And if the distance is less than the tower's range, then the tower can shoot at the enemy, which is what we're looking for. But we don't have this range right off the bat, so we have to calculate it. And we're going to use the positions for them both to get the difference in x and y to get the distance between those two. And we're going to use something called math.abs, which is absolute, math.absolute. And it's going to make sure that the distance is always positive, because we're looking for a distance here, we're not actually looking for the value. So if one x is larger than the other, and you do a subtraction, then you might end up with a negative number, but there is no negative number in our distance. So we have to convert that to a positive. And that's what math.abs do. And we're going to use this method in order to get the actual real distance. So let's code it out. We're going to begin in our tower manager class inside our update method. And in here, we're going to add a method called attack enemy if close and create the method and in here we will loop through our towers tower t towers and in this tower loop we need to access our enemies but we don't have any way of getting to them so we need to go to our plane and add a public enemy manager get enemy manager and of course return enemy manager because we want to access this array right here the enemies array and we don't have that so public array list enemy get enemies and return enemies like so so now we have an access to it so in our tower manager we add a other loop for enemy e playing dot get enemy manager get enemies and add some brackets as well and save and make sure you import if you need to and in this loop we add if is enemy in range tower and the enemy if it's not, else, we do nothing. And if it's close enough, then we shoot enemy. Or tower shoot enemy. So let's add this check first. And it is in this method we're going to do the check for our range. But we might need that check elsewhere too. So we're going to go to our helps package utils and in here we will add a public static int called get hypo distance between int x1 int y1 int x2 int y2 we add the first variable int x diff equals math.abs x1 minus x2 to get the difference in x and then the same for y y diff equals 
math.abs y1 minus y2. And then we return, cast it into an integer, math.hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. X diff, y diff, and save it. It's We cast it into an integer because the method returns a double. So we need to cast it into an integer. And we might use this method elsewhere. That's why we put it in the help package, just in case. So we don't have to code this again. So in here, we get a int range equals helps dot utils dot distance like that and t dot get x t dot get y e dot get x and also e dot get y and it's complaining because those values are supposed to be all integers but some of them are float so we go to our utils and just change this to float not flout float all of them like so and then we make these floats as well like so and now we don't have to recast them into integers so now we have the range and then we do a quick check return range is less than tower dot get range and then we return that part so now we'll return true if the range is less than the tower's range and false if the range is larger than the tower's range. And we will just make a simple call here before we get into using projectiles. We just want to see if it works. So enemy dot hurt and we put in one damage for now. But we don't have this hurt method in our enemies. So let's go to our enemies class. Uh, above move public void hurt int damage this dot health minus equal damage and we need to add a check here for what happens when health is less than zero if health is less than or equal to zero then we want to say alive equals false but we don't have this variable so we add it protected boolean alive equals true by default when we spawn a new enemy they should be alive and down here we add a public boolean is alive return alive like so and we're gonna use this on a few places to make sure we don't get any crashes or errors for example why would we check if the enemy is close enough is if it's dead so we're gonna add the first check in here if e dot is alive then we do the check otherwise we just skip it and i know there's going to be more places so for enemy manager we don't want to draw the enemy if the enemy is not alive so if e dot is alive then we draw it and the health bar for it we're going to copy this actually and we should also have a update method in here like so if E equals alive then we update the enemy move if there is some more places we're gonna get an error and we work our way from there all we have to do now is to test it to see if the enemies get hurt if they're close enough to a tower we're just gonna use a simple tower here and see if the wolf is losing any health when he gets close and they do but they lose health before they get into the circle and that's not because the math is wrong that's because the visual is wrong. And if we go to our action bar, I think it is. Yes, from the last episode where we added the visual, where we're drawing the tower range. And in here we have the width and the height for the entire circle. But remember, the range is not from left to right. The range is from the center and out, from the tower and out. So it's actually going to be to double the size because otherwise we just get half so we need to times two it everywhere here on our visual i think that is going to be better let's try it now and see if it works better so now they should probably lose health as soon as they get into 
the range, and they do. And everything is working as it should right now. Perfect. And what we need to do now is to add some projectiles to our game instead of this invisible killing thingy that's going on. We will most likely just begin working with projectiles in this episode. Finishing it will take some time to get everything working correctly because there's some math there as well. And uh, But let's start by going to our objects package. Right click, new class called projectile. And a projectile will store a few values. We will need a position, ID, type, and also a boolean for checking whether or not it's alive or rather active. But we will not use any hitbox because we will only use a position instead. And then we will check whether or not that position is inside an enemy. Because the projectile will be so small, so using a hitbox is a little bit too much. And it's going to be a problem later on when we want to rotate the projectiles. So we're just going to stick with a position. And we're going to print it out a little bit different than usual. So let's start with private point 2D, big letter, point float. We're going to have to use a float. And we're going to call it pos for position. This is just a class to store two values, x and y usually. And our point 2D float just extends the normal point 2D. And in this class, there is a few methods that we already can use, so it takes care of a lot of that stuff. So the position is done, then we need a private int ID and a projectile type, because it's going to be th three types. And last, we're going to need a private boolean active. And we're going to set it to true by default, because when you create it, it should be active. And let's create the constructor as well. So public projectile, and it will take in a float x, float y for position, a int id and an int projectile. I misspelled projectile. Projectile type. And the way we initialize the position is pos equals new point to d dot float and x and y. Simple as that. And if we check real quick pos dot, then we get a few values and we get a few methods that we can use for distance and set location. A lot of, a lot of useful, useful stuff when using positions. But uh, we're not going to use that right now. Then of course we need to say this dot id equals id and this dot projectile type equals projectile type. And we need a method here called public void move move and move takes in a float x and float y so we just say pulse.x plus equals x and pulse.y plus equals y and of course we need to add a few getters so source generates getters and setters select all generate we can get rid of projectile type as well as set i D, set position, we'll need get position, get projectile exact, yeah, the rest we need. And with the projectile class done, we move over to our constant class and create a new inner class called public static class projectiles. Let's just copy this section right here. And we will have a few different types called arrow, bomb, and also Hmm. Let's call it chains. Good enough. And we also need a method here called public static float get speed int type. And we need a switch for the type case arrow, case bomb, and case chains. And return zero float if none of those work if it's an arrow i'm just gonna guess the speed right now return because we will come back to this and adjust it a lot so let's say arrows three float bomb return one float and chains uh, return two float but we can leave it at that we just want to get it in here and then we can play around with it to find something that works 
All right, this is a good stopping point for now. I would love to continue, but that would have made this episode quite long. So we will pick it up in the next update and then we will see some projectile used in the game. I hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did, hit that like button and subscribe. It helps out the channel and you won't miss the next episode. Cheers. But that's all for now. Take care and I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye.